Who are you and what is it that you do and why are we here today? What's going on? I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused too. I thought I thought this was a mutual meeting. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm Fortune Cookie. I am a Twitch streamer sometimes and a legal assistant 40 hours a week. Um, and we're here just having a discussion and some shits and giggles and I Marvelous. can't wait. So I've already learned something. You're a legal assistant. I am. Okay. What got you into it? Tell me all about it. Well, um, to kind of keep it brief, I have been with this company now for six years. Um, about six years ago, I left a company that I wasn't happy about. Um, the management really just saw all the employees as the numbers and I was like, mm. you know what? I'm not digging this vibe. It's not conducive for my mental and my physical health and I needed to change. And it felt in my heart that it was time. And I think everyone can agree that change is hard, no matter if it's a career or anything oh, yeah. personal in your life. Um, so I had reached out to a friend who I knew had left the company and was working where I am now. And I asked her, I was like, hey, you know, this is probably a long shot, but is your job hiring? Mm. And she's like, actually, we are because I'm moving and they need a replacement. Uh -huh. So come apply. And I was like, oh, okay. So I took a chance and I applied for the job and here I am now, a legal assistant of six years and not gonna lie, sometimes it is very frustrating, but it's a challenge and I love challenges and I have such a great team that I love working with and that makes it worthwhile. That's awesome. And it's, it's really great when things like that, when the stars align, you know, you mentioned that oh, it's, totally. you just ask just in case. And I feel like so many things in my life that had long ramifications for years after um, that were big time changes in my life happened either kind of on a whim or on a literal or figurative coin flip um, or just a chance meeting or something like that. It's, um, I guess, you know, the movie Sliding Doors had something right. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> No, and I totally get that. And I think, you know, it's it's a number of things. It's not only the stars aligning, but it's also listening to yourself, mm -hmm. listening to yourself. And if you know in your heart that you're not happy and you don't want to be content, what are you going to do to change it? What are you going to do to better yourself? And mm -hmm. for me, that was my out. I was like, you know what? I've had it. I am at the point where I'm not happy and it's affecting me and I want better and mm -hmm. we all should want better. Absolutely. Absolutely. I constantly want better. I think it's almost pathological, <laughs> if I'm honest. If you um, don't want better, you just settle for things and settling's not fun. Settling is not fun, uh, but I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes I think there's times when I should have settled, but I didn't. So like mm -hmm. I definitely when faced with that, when faced with that, and this could be in anything, uh, that yeah, choice of, of is this, are you going to accept this thing that is not terrible but you think there could be a better situation or not like when you get those choices i always take the don't settle of course and it's not that i regret any of those decisions but sometimes i look back and wonder i'm like hmm i wonder if that was the i wonder if that was the wise choice yeah i mean you could look back and kind of look at it in the aspect of you know was this the right decision for me mm. or if you do flub and you make a mistake, you just learn and grow from it. I have realized in the short amount of time that I'm on this earth, like I have learned, I don't regret anything. Everything is a teaching moment and I can either learn to grow and be strong from it or I can break from it. And I choose to learn to grow and be strong from it. That's a great perspective. I really like that. Um, so you're also a Twitch streamer, you mentioned. You said sometimes yes. Twitch streamer. <laughs> a sometimes Twitch streamer, which is, I would say, I try to go at least 25 hours a week while juggling a 40-hour week. Job. That's heaps. That's heaps. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a part-time streamer. Mm -hmm. Not very good at it, but part-time. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Don't say that. <laughs> I think you're great. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who agree with me. Um, okay, at best. What, what got you into it? That's a funny story. Um, so I actually had no intention of ever streaming. Mm. Um, 
I actually wasn't on Twitch until about, I want to say October, November of 2018, mm -hmm. um, because, um, and you may know them, um, A1 Twins, mm -hmm. they are my friends from high school. Awesome. Um, Kyle and I are really good friends and he texted me one day and was like, hey, you know, if you're free and you don't have anything to do, I'm streaming today and it's totally free and here's the channel. So click this link and I'm mm. just like, I feel like you're telemarketing me, but I am bored, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I just started hanging out in the stream and I liked the vibes that I felt from Twitch and I just kept hanging out. Mm. Eventually they modded me, which I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, and then Kyle approached me um, a few months after that and was like, you know, you're really good at connecting with people. Mm. He's like, it's just something natural. I don't understand it, but you have this way of attracting people to you. And I think that you would be a really great streamer. Mm. My response to him was, fuck you, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I was just like, no, uh-uh. I was like, nope, nope, I'm weird. Nobody's going to like it, whatever. Mm. He kept persisting, and I kept telling him no. Then I happened to pop into Zephyr's XP stream, mm -hmm. and he was playing Final Fantasy IX, and that's how we became friends. Ah, and, I see yeah. the connections. We're, we're, we're correlating here, right? Um. And then at one point, I introduced my best friend and Zeph, connected them. And then Zeph was like, Kyle told me you don't want to stream, but when are we going to see a fortune cookie stream? I was just like, no, Zeph, no, I don't want to <laughs> do it. And then after a while, he kept asking and Kyle was just like, you know, you should reconsider it. He's got a point. Just try it. I was just like, no, guys, I'm not going to do it. And then I told my best friend um, who is misunderstood 89, I was like, I have Kyle and Zeph asking me when I'm going to stream and I don't want to do it. And she just literally, and this is my best friend. We talk to each other point blank. We don't hold things out. Mm, good she friend. Me and, yeah. And I love her to death. Looked me in the eye and said, you know what, bitch? Fucking do it. If you don't do it, then you won't know if you're good at it or not. Damn. You don't like it, don't fucking do it. She was the push that I needed. That's a so great friend three, to have. That's yeah. a great friend to have. Those three people are the reason I started streaming. That's awesome. So your friend from high school, Kyle from A1 Twins, um, yep. one of the twins, uh, yep. and great stream, by the way. Zephyr, speaking of great streams. And your best friend it was the trifecta that pushed you into it and they they it clearly was. all saw something in you that they thought was suited to it um do you see that now do you feel suited to this yes and no um i think that we're all harsh critics of ourselves right mm. we all have a perspective of ourselves that might not be super positive mm. um i still feel like i'm very awkward um and sometimes i actually no not sometimes i will say all the time i still get nervous hitting start stream and it's just more of the i guess the nerves of wanting to make good impressions on people mm. i want people to feel like they can come into my stream and feel that they're accepted and that they're loved for who they are as long as they're a good-hearted person that's awesome. Well, I, I've been in your stream and I, I can uh, confirm that's what you're doing. So Aww, you still you. feel, you do, you feel those nerves before every stream? Every stream. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to lie, even starting this podcast, I was like, yep, I'm a ball of nerves. Not going <laughs> to <laughs> 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 ball of nerves. <laughs> well, I mean, it is the biggest podcast on earth as of uh, last <laughs> week. So I understand. Uh, no, I, I get that. I was. I recently started a project with a friend of mine. My name is Trout, and um, I got him on, and we did a live content, and that was. Uh, I think oh, it was like the thirteenth awesome. or fourteenth that I'd done. So I, I'd done it. It wasn't new, <laughs> but beforehand we had this conversation with each other, and we both stream, and you know. And he's like, "Dude, are you nervous?" I'm like, "Yeah." 
He's like, why? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I just am. We just had that. So I can, I can kind of relate that it's, uh, but I think nerves are okay. You know, it's a sort of, you know, if you reframe, well, this is my perspective anyway, reframing nerves are kind of just, it's like excitement in a way. But I also feel like, um, because even though I danced for 16 years, I would still get that like moment where my heart and my stomach switched place, mm. even though I was like, I trained for this, I'm, I'm ready for this, but it's still that nerve of, oh God, I'm going to be sick. I can't do this. I don't want to do this, but then I do it and then it's fine. How do you feel um, midway through a stream and then at the end of a stream? Uh, midway through the stream to the end of the stream, I feel more relaxed. I think because I just try to remind myself, like, I'm just here to hang out with friends. That's all I'm here to do. Mm. And when people start streaming for the wrong reasons, because they're like, oh, I want to be a partner. I want to make money. I'm just like, for me, it's it's not that. Like, yeah, mm. it would be cool, the thought of being a partner. But for me, it's more about friendship and community. Okay, that's interesting. So for you, and that sounds like it's how it started as well, because you're invited by friends into that. Mm -hmm. So so you view Twitch then as a purely social thing? I use it for a social interaction, yes. Um, mm. I think like anybody else, I started in the midst of the pandemic and mm. it was really hard, you know, not understanding what was going on in the world and just being told, hey, you got to stay home and yeah. minimize contact. And I was like, well, I am outside of streaming. I love hanging out with my friends. I am a big hugger. So this took a mental and physical toll on me. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I need to channel that elsewhere. Otherwise, I'm going to drive myself fucking nuts. I'm going to drive myself insane. So coming to Twitch and just getting to know people like yourself who are amazing has been very therapeutic. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, no, I totally agree. For me, a uh, similar, similar story. And um, I'm a, I, I consider myself social. And, uh, you know, the last year and a, and a bit has had a similar, my circumstances have been similar, let's say. And Twitch has been a godsend for me. It's, it's, uh, I didn't even know what it was going to be when I got into it. When I got into it, it was, well, this seems like a fun project. Uh, this yeah, seems like exactly. something I want to do. My brother was doing a little bit of streaming. I'd watched a couple of these sort of mid to larger streamers. I, I thought, mm -hmm. oh, that looks like a good time. I feel like, you know, I have a kind of a bit of a performance background. That seems like a great time. Um, and then as I sort of got into it a little bit and, you know, I had my own sort of career woes due to the pandemic, let's say, and then I started to see, whoa, you're going to make a little bit of money on this thing. And then, <laughs> and, and then I started thinking, wow, some people are like really making some money on this thing. And so exactly. it, it got a little bit uh, intertwined for me. The, I wouldn't lie if I didn't, I don't see an allure of kind of becoming an independent businessman, let's say. Um, on your own terms but at the same time when I look back what was the most important thing for me especially during those first 12 months when the pandemic here was really like we were going through some stuff over here like many places um, was like wow I had I, I built connections with people and 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 when we felt when when I felt so uh, disconnected from reality and disconnected from other humans it's uh Oh, it's like very, it's, I can't even describe how important it was to me on that, um, from that perspective as well. I totally feel that. And Porto, if we ever meet up, whether I'm in Australia or this, you're the States or travel or ever, I'm giving you a hug. It's fucking A. <laughs> fucking A. Hell yeah. Well, well that's something, uh, dude, that's another thing I've thought about is I now because I have a background of traveling and living abroad and that's something that I just like to do. And um, it's a lifestyle that I like. And there's so many people from around the world, from uh, the US, from Canada, Japan, Malaysia, um, uh, Korea, all over the place, Europe, South America. Yeah. Um, 
like I know people in different places now. So this, weirdly enough, sitting in my room um, in a future in which things uh, hopefully resume some kind of uh, quote unquote normality, I have people to visit and I will, I will. That'll be so much fun. I'm so excited because I have so many places I want to explore, Mm. including I've never been to Europe and I'm very curious about it. I went, well, you know, technically I've not been to Europe because I've been to the UK. Um, (laughs) And that kind of doesn't count anymore. I don't know. (laughs) No, I only went, I went to Scotland for the first time ever. about, a, about two years ago, I loved it. And I have a bit of a, a Europe thirst at the moment. Where would you like to go in Europe? Well, um, I have friends, and you may know them, in Barcelona, Riff versus Raf. So I would love to go see them. And if I did my math right, they're about 10 hours from Paris. Mm. So that'd be pretty dope. Mm. I mean, once you're over there, it's all there. Yeah, Um, it is. And that's what's kind of cool about Europe. Um, Kind of like the same thing with the East Coast. Uh, When I visited um, New York in fall of 2019, I was like, oh, from New York City, I'm like two hours from Philadelphia, three hours from Boston, a couple hours from Baltimore. It's just crazy how fast you can get somewhere else. Yeah, that's, I mean, as an Australian, I grew up in West Australia and that is the most mm-hmm. isolated place ever. Oh, no. You you are like the capital city there is, you know, it's a million and a half people. It's a city. Yeah. However, you are maybe like an eight, uh, 16 to 18 hour drive from the next city that's worth a damn. Good. You're just a half a country away. And so there's the, even coming to the, the east coast of Australia, which by mm-hmm. world standards is probably more spread out than even the West Coast of the US. But it felt yeah. so much more dense. I'm like, oh my God, there's a city like four hours away. That's insane. Mm-hmm. And um, I've, re- I've realized how um, much more densely populated the rest of the world is. I mean, yeah, it totally is. Um, and I can confirm that because I grew up in a state that was very, very small where basically everyone knew everyone. Um, my best friend of 21 years misunderstood. We knew each other um, for a long time. She knows my cousins, like she knows Kyle and David. It's just like, that's how small that state was. Mm. So when I moved to Colorado, I was like, I've never ran into anybody that I know and this is great. <laughs> which, which state did you grow up in? New Mexico. Oh, Albuquerque. Is that the... Yeah, uh, Albuquerque Geo-guessa. is... Geo-guessa king. <laughs> Albuquerque, um, but we all went to the west side. So, and that's what we call it, is the west side. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what else is different about Colorado from New Mexico? Uh, what's different about Colorado from New Mexico is I just love that it's a bigger city. Um, so growing up in a state that is just about to hit 2.5 million to now living in a state where there's 6 million people. Mm. You definitely feel the different pace of things. And, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and lie. I do miss my family and my friends. And of course the beautiful sunsets, the balloon fiesta and the food, but there's a part of me that would just wanted to change. And I felt like in my heart it was time to change. And, you know, some people ask if I'll ever come back. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I will. But right now, I don't know. How long have you been in Colorado for? I've been in Colorado almost seven years in July. Mm, mm. Yeah, that's, that's enough time to know. That's enough time to know if you like a place, I think. What about gaming itself? What's your history with video games? Well, with video games, um, it just kind of happened when I was, I want to say around four or five. Mm. Um, my dad had the old school Atari. Ooh. And um, being a kid of the late 80s, and yes, I'm telling my age kind of. Um, <laughs> Me and you he, both, don't worry about it. <laughs> he did not want to get rid of the Atari. And my mom, being very traditional Chinese, was like, games are not good for kids. They need to do schoolworks. And he was like, 
whatever their kids as long as they do their homework and they do their chores and they listen to us let them play video games so i remember playing uh, pitfall on it mm. and pong and then i remember one day my mom was having a garage sale she sold the atari <sighs> i was so upset <laughs> I was so upset. Like, That's devastating. She just thought, she's like, it's a waste of money, whatever. And my dad knew that my brother and I were upset with it. And then I remember him coming home with the NES and she was <laughs> So then um, I kind of got into um, really playing Super Mario Bros. 3. Oh, yeah. And the original Super Mario Bros. And being angry and cursing at the screen because the dog was laughing at me when I missed in Duck Hunt. Oh, in Duck Hunt, yeah. yeah. Yes, a <laughs> terrible dog. Um, so yeah, I just basically stemmed from Atari and NES. And um, at one point, my brother had gotten a PlayStation, so we would play in the PlayStation um, when homework was done. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then it kind of just delved into other things. Um, I'd actually, honestly, I didn't get a PS4 until five years ago mm. because I kind of had been consumed with like work and college and was just like, I've got other things to do. Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, you know what? I can be a kid again. It's fine. That's so interesting. There's uh, a lot of people I speak to of a certain age group, let's say, um, one that I may or may not belong in. Uh, is this narrative of having this period of time off where, let's say, life took over, where you, you kind of decide, and I certainly did this anyway, oh, I'm an adult now, I need to focus on these things, and that stuff's cool, but that stuff belongs in my, that stuff belongs as childhood memories. And now I need to do, and now I need to have more adult fun and, 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 and then focus on my you know, work and career and getting my shit together and this and that or what, and whatever you consider that to be the case. But it seems that at a certain age, people go, you know what was more fun than this before this? And I've noticed a lot of people, um, myself included, having that narrative of sort of making a return and going, oh, no, I can balance adulthood and this kind of fun. Um, oh, yeah. And that's wild. You started with the Atari. Yeah, I started with the Atari. And for those that don't know what an Atari is, let me tell you, it's a brick of a machine and your controller is literally a joystick with some buttons. And that was not easy, like at all. <laughs> that's even for, for me, that's like a step further back in time. I started, the first console I ever put my hands on and, and had a go at was the sega master system i think anything nowadays for kids that's like beyond playstation 3 is considered ancient so i'm pretty sure we're considered ancient too. <laughs> oh we were ancient five years ago unfortunately <laughs> and like i get roasted on my stream all the time you were saying you didn't get a ps4 till five years ago i didn't get a ps3 until last year i've been out of the game i'm trying i'm playing catch up right now and like I was playing a new console soon. Then I've got a I've got a Switch. I got, I do have a Switch. That's like. Okay, but I'm saying like a new er PlayStation. Well, here's the thing. Like, there's so much because I had that period of not playing. There's so much on the PS3 that I never had a PS3 before, and so I never played any of those hits. I think I will get a like. I've always lived a little bit behind the times. I'll probably get a PS4 in the next year. Probably because I want to play You're Final Fantasy play VII Bloodborne. Remake. I want to play Bloodborne. I want to play <laughs> Dark Souls Three. There's a lot I want to play Zekiro. There's a lot I want to play. Um, which is a perfect transition, by the way. You, I heard you on your stream recently, and uh, for those who don't know you. I almost said you're a Soulsborne streamer, but you're not that. You just sometimes stream Soulsborne games, or you have been lately. You mentioned on stream, and this is sounds uh, eerily familiar to your uh, Twitch origin story, that you initially had no intent to stream oh, yeah. these games. So, so <laughs> tell me about your origins with the Souls games. Okay, so that's actually a really, really funny story. Um, I have 
have two friends, um, one of them being Mok Tung Seven and the other being Andy. Um, and they both love Bloodborne, mm. Soulsborne games, all of that. Cool. Um, one day I was just playing a game and they kept asking me, like, why don't you play Bloodborne? And I just like looked straight at the camera and I was just like, fuck you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was just very frank about it. I was just like, no, because I had seen Kyle struggle through it. And I was just like, why would I do it to myself? Yeah. Like, just why? And they thought it was funny. So they kept bugging me about it and bugging me to one day I said, maybe. And they're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> mom said maybe. We're, we're, we're getting you there. We're getting you there. And I was just like, you guys got a maybe. Congratulations. Then they keep bugging me for like weeks and I'm at the point, I was just like, you know what? You want me to play this game so badly? Fucking buy it. Buy it and I'll play it. Put and I'm, thinking your in mouth my head, is. <laughs> I'm like, I, in my head, I've got them because you know, you tell somebody to buy something for you. They're not going to do it. Right. 20 minutes later, I had a donation of $40 come in. 20 minutes. I was just like, damn it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say like the next day or next week or something. No, 20 minutes later. And 20 minutes later, I had a donation and they're like, read the donation. And it was just like, Bloodborne hype, Bloodborne hype. And I was just like, buy it. So I bought it. <laughs> and thus began the legacy that is your soul's history. Are you, how do you feel about it now? I'm not going to lie. I hated the first playthrough of Bloodborne. I hated it because it was very different from anything that I've ever played. Um, because typically I would play something like Diablo or Tomb Raider or like first person shooter, you know, something just like easy to pick up and put down. Mm. Right. And these were mechanics and tactics that I were I wasn't used to. I was like, this is using a different part of my brain and I don't know if I like it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but then after that, kind of going through the second playthrough and kind of getting familiar with things and kind of knowing what the lore was about, because for anyone that doesn't know about Soulsborne games, they don't really tell you the lore like upfront. So you got to figure it out. And that's kind of like the, okay, well, I guess I have to do fucking research, even though I just got off work and I don't want to, and I just want to sleep. But um, after the second playthrough, things started to feel a lot better. And I was just like, you know what? If I could survive Bloodborne, let me give the Dark Souls trilogy a chance. So I gave Dark Souls a trilogy a chance. Um, I will say that I hated Dark Souls 1 up until I got to ONS because it is very slow, very slow. And then also using a shield was something I wasn't used to. It was very foreign because you don't use a shield mm. in Dark, in, uh, in Bloodborne. Mm -hmm. So using that in Dark Souls 1 was weird. Um, then I was just like, you know what? I finished Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2 time. I don't hate Dark Souls 2. It's not a horrible game like everyone says. It's just, I wish it was about... 15 bosses shorter than the 40 bosses that it is yes yes <laughs> i i played dark souls 2 off stream because i was i don't know i just wanted to experience it for the first time off stream i didn't want i, di I wasn't in the mood for everyone telling me to get good and like i was like you know fuck everyone i'm playing i'm gonna play this after stream and i'll, I'll come back and show people on my second playthrough i came in with the low expectations but being a huge fan of Dark Souls 1. And like, it really, I liked it a lot, but, but, few too many bosses. Some of the bosses weren't as memorable. Exactly. And a couple of the locations felt unnecessary and a little bit uninspired. Yeah. That and the, I will say, the rolling. <laughs> <laughs> i had to research i had to research the adp stat right yeah i had a soft cap it at like 30 before i felt a difference yep yep yeah so like that's a, for those who haven't played that's the st the stat to go in on no matter your build just get that adp up and then it'll start to feel yep. like the other souls games 
um but some of the locations are great like uh what is it the the dragon castle area where all the dragons are flying oh around. yeah that one is really good that is what i call um khaleesi let her children run free area <laughs> yeah. and i want that my those children off my lawn <laughs> yeah yeah no i love that part though like it felt like it felt like a payoff area to me felt like when i've been through trudging through these other places and like ah here we go something kind of uh spectacular I mean, for me, that was more so the DLC because I felt like the DLC had more quality bosses. Mm. But I'm not going to sit here and say that I didn't have a favorite boss in the main game because I did. Which one? Um, Vilstat. He's the Bell Knight. Bell Knight. The, 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 the glass, looking glass knight? No. No, not the looking glass knight. He literally has a big bell. He's like gold and he like swings it. That's Vilstat. Why can't I? What is he in the DLC? No, he's not in the DLC. He's in the main game. His brother is in the DLC, though. Oh my god! Hold on, I'm just gonna very because I just feel really, really dumb. <laughs> he's my right favorite. Now. No, you're fine. He's my favorite boss fight because he was the first boss fight that I felt was really fair, and that was kind of tough. Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That boss, that boss was uh, that was a good fight. That was a good fight. I, I liked that, that fight a lot. Yeah. His brother, though, I hated that boss fight, and I didn't know that there was another name for his brother. Um, so if you didn't play the DLC, um, his brother's the Fume Knight. I've and heard I guess, about the Fume Knight. Yeah, a lot of people call him the Fuck the Knight. <laughs> 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 he's terrible. He's terrible. Yeah, um, oh, I really want to play the DLC of that game. I, I don't know about you, but I, I find these, uh, you know, you mentioned sort of going through this kind of slog with these games. I find mm -hmm. the more you put in, the more it gives back though. And I'm at a stage where I'm just a dick dude to like any kind of Souls yeah, game. I totally feel that. Um, I think because I felt overwhelmed with playing so many Souls games and going from Bloodborne to Dark Souls 1, to dark souls 2 mm. without taking a break in between oh that's like, yeah, different games i got so burnt out and especially with dark souls 2 being so big i was just like you know what i need to take a break or i'm gonna start hating these games so i did it for my mental sanity wise decision wise wise decision um so before i uh torpedo this entire content by talking about souls for the next five hours with you i'm gonna quickly <laughs> pivot Let's get back to Twitch in general a little bit. Um, you mentioned earlier that um, how valuable you found it during, especially during the pandemic as a means of connecting with people. How much of your life outside of work, let's say, is spent on Twitch? And what has it replaced? What were you doing before then? This is something I was thinking about myself the other day. Question. Um, I think it kind of has replaced my tendency to just want to do nothing. Mm. Um, you know, I'm a very go, 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 go person, get things done. Um, and then when I usually am done with those things, I'm just like, well, I guess I'll just relax and sit back yeah so i feel like that's my way of getting myself out of that habit and just kind of making things happen um so every morning i get up i get up at 4 30 in the morning every single morning and a lot of Ooh. people think i'm crazy about it but i am a person of structure i do well by structure and schedule so every morning i wake up i drink water a lot of water mm. um I do stretches, I do yoga mm. to kind of just start my day right before I start work. And that works for me because I have this feeling that if I don't go in with a positive mindset, something as little as like a report messing up will frustrate me. I see. So I just have to go in there calm and collected and I'm good. And usually that helps balance me. So after work, I like to take that time to just kind of, you know, rest my eyes because I'm like, I just stared at a, a computer screen for nine hours mm. with Excel reports. My eyes hurt. So I'm like, okay, power nap of 20 minutes. Then we go live. 
And I yes. love it. I love the go, go, go feeling, especially when, even if it's like taking five steps to my computer, just to start stream. I love it. It gives me this rush and it makes me feel like it's another part of my day, but a better part because I look forward to it the moment I wake up. Mm, that's awesome. That's awesome. They're the things I want to do in life, the things that I look forward to um, and, and continue to after, you know, mm -hmm. a year or so of doing it. So, yeah, I haven't thought of that as a replacement for that doing nothing time, that kind of, that especially with busy people, you have that kind of vegetative state. Like I guess the back in the, the couch potato, exactly. And it is kind of, I guess it does kind of tick that box, but uh, as a viewer, as a streamer or as both, it is it does feel more active in a sense. When I first started doing Soulsborne, I was doing squats, like I was doing squats on death. And there was a point that I had to be like, no, we're not going to do that because there was someone that would gifted like 50 subs. One, I was like, that's 10 per each gift sub. And I was like, yeah, my legs are going to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm not about to injure myself. So, yeah. So now I just make sure to do yoga every morning just to stretch myself out. That um, routine you have, I definitely don't get up at 4.30 a.m., but the, I guess the ideology behind it, uh, the principle behind it is something that I've kind of gotten into as well um, with my structure being my daily structure being less determined as a result of things that have happened i've had to mm -hmm. become kind of self-reliant and determine my own and define my own structure and it's interesting if you had have told me a couple of years ago what a what kind of role exercise would play in helping to organize my thoughts and helping to make me feel like i have some kind of control if not over the world then over myself um it's if I don't do, if I don't go for my, my run uh, at the same time every week, if I don't do my daily exercises, I have like a, I have, I, I keep myself accountable with a chart on this whiteboard. Or I have to like mark it all off because I like to see that kind of visual yeah, thing. And exactly. the goal for me, I'm not trying to lose or gain weight or, or like I'm fairly, I, I'm, I'm fairly happy with my physical condition, but it has this mental effect on me where it, 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 I feel so much more um, uh, not driven, but so much more focused, I guess, when I do that. Yeah, and, motivated, and, focused. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I can, I can totally relate to that, though I haven't – I'm getting up at 9 a.m. I'm going to admit I'm getting up at nine. It's, you know, you know, I'm a, I'm a night owl. But uh, what time what time do you start work? I'll start work around 5 a.m. So I just do like a 30 minute session and okay. I work at home remotely. So I mm. just log in and just punch in. And, um, that gives me time because usually in the mornings um, before I start stretching is I make sure that I drink 16 ounces of water mm. and then I drink the remaining 16 ounces of water after my workout mm. and i have to do this because i feel like it starts my day off right and then i'm allowed to have my coffee ah i see i see so you're more disciplined than i i i tell myself i'm disciplined but you're right on top of this i try to be um i i was doing a lot of research and um just kind of was like trying to take care of myself and just do better eating habits sleeping habits working on the sleeping part because I still suck at that. <laughs> um, mm. But just looking at things about how to do a little bit of longevity in my life. Yeah. Let's, you mentioned sleeping habits. Um, mm -hmm. I've spoken to a lot of people recently who've mentioned or talked at length about uh, some problems they're having sleeping. Mm -hmm. Is this a new thing for you? Um, it's always kind of been a thing. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, college fucked up my sleep schedule. Uh -huh. <laughs> college, I absolutely did that. Um, but I'm the type of person, I'm the oddball probably, but if I get eight hours of sleep, my body does not like that. My body does well on six to seven hours of sleep. Mm. So, okay, lucky. 
Well, it's just, I don't know. I guess my body just got kind of used to it. And so when I oversleep, I just don't feel as alert. So when I give my body the sufficient six, six and a half or seven hours, it does better. Mm. Yeah, I've turned into a bit of a seven boy. Um, I was eight for the longest time, but I don't know. I just kind of wanted more awake time. I wanted more waking hours. There's things I want to do. Yeah, and I think that kind of had to do um, with when I was actually going into the office for my job. um, I would wake up like extra early on Sundays because I was like, you know what? This is my last day off and I'm not going to waste it because, (laughs) you know, that's my the last of my freedom before I have to go corporate, you know? Mm -hmm. So I would wake up super early um, and just start doing things for the day so that way i was like okay by the time it's like six o'clock i can eat and i can relax and be a vegetable if i want to because (laughs) i have to go to work tomorrow yeah yeah my favorite kind of uh my favorite kind of tired it's a weird way to start a sentence my favorite kind of tired anyway i'm gonna go with it my favorite kind of tired is that that one where you've been really busy And you're like, I did this today. I did that today. I did that today. They're all complete. I'm completely uh, wrecked. I feel physically and mentally tired, but I feel good. Like, yeah, no, that, that definitely was me. Um, back in March when I did my charity stream, that was probably the longest I've ever slept in forever. I was Mm. just so drained. Well, let's talk about this charity stream because I know okay. it was very successful for you. What was the what was the charity stream? What was the motivation for it? Tell me everything. So, uh back in March, I I'm going to say it was March 11. Um I did a 12-hour charity stream for American Heart Association mm. and I did it in a onesie pajama and that day it decided to be snowy so it was kind of perfect to wear a onesie pajama. Nice. Let's go Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Hell yes. Um, <laughs> but the inspiration for it was, you know, I wanted to give back. Um, mm. And for me, once a year didn't seem enough. So I was like, you know what? I want to make it every six months where I do a charity stream. So the next one will be on my birthday in October. Um, which I'm looking forward to. But the inspiration for this one um, is very personal to me. Um, I chose American Heart Association because of my dad. Um, And I am also thankful that he is still here with us. Um, It was a horrible couple of years. Um, Long story short, um, he had experienced some heart issues with a mild heart attack. with pancreatitis and angina um, and also having a TIA. And for those that don't know what a TIA is, it's a mini stroke. Oh, man. Um, wow. So it not only took a toll on him, it took a toll on us. And I felt helpless, especially being out of state. Of and course, yeah. It was really hard. It was really hard not wanting to drop everything and just be there. But he was like, you have to work. You can't stop your life just because of me. And so I ultimately decided to do the charity stream for American Heart Association because I knew what it felt to feel helpless and I didn't want other families to feel that way. Well, that's, I mean, firstly, I hope dad's going okay. Dad is doing well. Um, Everything as far as his heart's concerned as well. Actually, last year he had his knee replaced and he has about 80% functionality, which is actually pretty impressive for almost mm. being a year out of that. So I'm mm. really proud of him. That's great. That's great. Um, I imagine it's, yeah, it sounds like it was a really trying time for the family and and for him, obviously. And and that, yeah, yeah that helplessness of, of being away from it all um, and... And wanting to do something when faced with with uh health concerns with family members uh, you know especially most of us you and i are not medical people and even when you are a lot of the time you might not be able to do anything uh i can i can only imagine how you must have felt 
Uh, but that's so awesome that you that you um, came up with the concept of doing this, and and it was really successful, right? It was successful. Um, and in my heart, I was just like, oh, this is going to be terrible. This is going to be so bad because I was just like a ball of nerves. Every charity stream, every stream, I'm just nervous. Yeah. For no apparent reason. Um, so my first charity stream that I did on my birthday last year in October, I did it for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Mm. And we raised uh, 1,569 US dollars. That's awesome. In March for American Heart Association, we raised $2,000. And I am immensely proud of that. And I am so thankful to everyone who came even just to hang out or to donate. Um, and I know there's a bunch of families out there that are so thankful for that as well. Yeah. Um, I might even, I just, it just came to me. I might even put a link. Is there a way that people can donate to the Heart Association just um, whenever? I believe there is. Um, let me look it up. I believe it's heart.org, but let me double check. Yeah, I'll put the link in the, in the description, you know, just in case. People yes, like it to. is heart.org. Um, so not only is American Heart Association um, preventative in heart disease, but also in stroke. And um, actually, uh, another fact that I had learned was that um, heart disease is the number two killer for women. So it's mm. as equally important for everyone. I did not know that. Okay. Um yeah, a lot of I, I've actually had I had a friend who had um, my age who had heart problems, and mm -hmm. it's he too was lucky enough and strong enough and had enough support around him to bounce back. But the amount of um, strength that that required from him and from everyone around him uh, is is immense. So I'm sure any support it, that can go to that it organization definitely is. helps. Yeah, it definitely is, and you know. Um, some people think, oh, well, once I have the surgery or a consultation, everything will be fine. But it's a lifestyle change. Like, there's not just a surgery that's going to fix it. It is a whole lifestyle change. And it comes with a lot of education and you wanting to be better for yourself and for other people. I know that after this whole stint, my dad was like, okay, um, I need to go to physical therapy. I need to make sure that I'm listening to my doctor. And if anything feels wrong with my meds, I need to be vocal about it and I need to talk to them about it. Mm, mm, yeah. And that awareness of, of uh, you mentioned earlier that life is short. Mm -hmm. And I think I've had a, a for different reasons, but I, I think I've come to that recently as well. Like, wow, like to, to be in our situation, and I, I don't want to come off as preachy. When I look at this, when I go through yeah, the editing sure. process, if I feel I'm too preachy, this is getting chopped. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, the realization of that has really, it's kind of a great realization in a way because I feel so much more, um, I feel that a day is so much more valuable than I used to. And, and one thing oh, I that I try to that. never say now is I'm bored. Mm -hmm. Like, I know, don't be bored. You're, de you're like, you're only alive for so long. Figure something out, you know? No, it's, it's totally true. And it was my aunt that told me this a long time ago um, that, you know, tomorrow's never guaranteed. So yeah. hug somebody. Like it might be the last time you ever see them because it might. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, that but that is really good news, and I, I'm glad that uh, your dad's um, kind of on the way back to recovery. Are you a competitive person? I I want to say, in a way, yes, I am a competitive person, but I'm not the type of person that's competitive where it's like, oh, it's one or nothing. It's just like mm. it's like, hey. If I can shave off a couple seconds on this run on Bloodborne, cool. If not, whatever. Like, well, that's a different kind of competitive, isn't it? There's that. There's that kind of, I guess, competing with yourself and then competing with others. Yeah. Um, so I'm just more laxed about it. Like, if someone's like, "Oh, I can best you in this game," and I'm like, "All right, game on." <laughs> yeah. Um, are you competitive in anything outside? of uh, Twitch? 
Um, well, I used to be competitive in dance. Um, yeah. For 16 years, I did ballet, jazz, and hip hop. Awesome. Um, so I have um, championship trophies. Nice. Um, Damn. But outside of that, not really. Um, I just really loved dance. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to continue it um, because college got crazy and it just kind of fell. So um, you're involved in dance competitions. Yep, dance competitions. Um, I remember there was a point where I was in a dance studio four days a week, three hours a day. And my mom wow. would be making me meals and meals and meals and just making sure she's like, okay, you, you have pasta, you have salad, you have vegetables, you have meat. And then just like making sure that I was always at dance competitions, recitals, whatever. And our competition sometimes would be in Florida, in Vegas. Mm. So it got expensive. But my mom knew I loved it so much that um, she was often able to make it happen. And so was my dad. So I was very fortunate um, to have that opportunity. And I miss it. But I don't miss the bitchy drama of it. I'll just say that. Mm, okay. Okay. Well... I'm not going to lie, my perceptions, my concept of the competitive dance world has been flavored only by the films I've seen, such as Black Swan and Suspiria. Um, but it's totally accurate. It's totally accurate. Really? Wow. It's totally accurate. It is. Um, you're going to have some of the girls that are just really, very sweet and they're just like, look, this is for fun. And then you're going to have the cutthroat bitches that are just like, no, this is life. And it's just like, okay, it's not a doggy dog world. Mm. We're not doing this other than fun. And I just really wanted to have fun with it. Um, was it exciting when I was offered a solo? Yeah. Hell yeah. But was it the end of the world when I wasn't? No. Mm. Sounds like you're pretty mature about it then. Um, I'm just reminded, you've just reminded me, the high school I went to for the last two, my last two years of high school, we actually had a ballet school in our school, its awesome. own campus. But here's the thing, I only just remembered because it was so separate from the school. They all studied together and they basically got, I think their focus was on ballet. And they, I think a few people went to, like US dancing with the stars and became oh, dance wow. partners and stuff like that. It was like WA's, I think pre one of their premier kind of dance schools, but I barely knew any of them because I think they were just mm -hmm. intensively doing this time. Like again and again, they almost felt like a, uh, it was a different school in a way. And I, I just was yeah, reminded of that. I mean, it's very demanding. Like the actual, like if you get into a dance company, it's just like eat, maybe sleep dance and when i say eat like they're on very restrictive diets I because bet. if you've seen ballerinas they're very thin mm -hmm. very 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 thin because their partners have to be able to lift them and they're not exactly like the buffest guys so they try to make it to where the ballerinas are lighter so usually it's a lot is of that fun, why right? okay okay mm -hmm. okay yeah all right, that makes sense. And trust me, I love brown rice and vegetables, but after a couple of meals, it gets a little boring. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. I totally hear you. Um, wow. Okay, so that's that's interesting. A lot of people I've spoken to um, who uh, stream on Twitch have some kind of performative background. That's that's a thread I've noticed, and it's often very different. You know, it might go from um, yeah. music, uh, to, uh, I think it's, I think it's actually quite commonly music. Now I think about it. I, I know some people have done like stand up yeah. and drama and things like that. Um, it really just depends. I mean, I do have a musical background. I just don't talk about it often because I hate the sound of my singing voice. Okay. So this, I'm glad you brought this up. I got fucking roasted on my channel the other day. <laughs> I got fucking absolutely eviscerated on my channel and it tilted me and I kind of turned on chat for a while because uh, when I do shout, for those who don't know, when I do shout out to my channel, a little clip pops up and there was a clip of you singing. Oh and no. 
<laughs> no, but here's the thing. I didn't know you had a singing voice. I didn't I didn't oh, know that that was a part of a part of you. And I was like, wow, you've got a really good voice. And um I think I here's what I think I said. I'm surprised that your voice is so great. And chat went, wow, way to backhand compliment. I went, that's not a backhand compliment. And okay. And I got all worried. Like, I'm like, oh no, what if I've like, you know, I hope I haven't like been mean or anything like that. But what I meant, and I'm not explaining this to you because we've, we've, I've subsequently, you know, said sorry. And you said you didn't even notice it or whatever. But, um, what I meant was that I just, I had no idea you had a musical background. And you generally, when you see someone, you just assume everyone I assume to be average at everything until proven otherwise. Mm-hmm. And then when someone deviates either above or beyond, like I would, if you had like a terrible voice, I probably would have said, damn, I didn't realize you had such a shit voice because <laughs> it would be different from average. And so, so chat, that's all I meant. That's all I meant. Um, but you got a great voice. What do you mean you don't like your voice? I don't like my voice. Um, and I think the reason I don't like my voice is just like, I don't know. I don't think anyone really likes the sound of their voice. Like hearing myself mm. talk, I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, that first time you hear your voice uh, play back to you, ooh. I was like, I sound yeah, like that? So cringeworthy. And that's kind of the same way as singing, which is going to be fun when I do my 1,000 follower celebration and I'm going to be singing a whole fucking song. What song are you going to sing? Boy. I have one in mind, but I'm not saying I'm going to reveal it mm-hmm. when I actually um, reach the milestone. That's fair. Which I still have to plan that out. Um, just so that way I have time to practice it so I can feel a little more comfortable, even though that day I'm probably going to be like, I'm going to hurl, guys. I'm going to hurl. Yeah, the nerves <laughs> that day. That's so yep. cool. So I'm guessing you do have a background with singing then. I do. Yes. Um, I, I think I was told at five that I could sing, I could carry a tune. Mm. And from there, um, the dance studio is in, utilize that. And they're like, okay, well, pick a song and just start singing it. And I guess my dad and my mom kind of realized um, that I had a wider vocal range Mm. than, you know, most people thought. And they're just like, Here's a CD. They gave me my first CD, which was Celine Dion. Nice. And I remember putting it in. And the first song that came on was The Power of Love. And I don't remember if I nailed it or not, but I remember my mom coming in and was just like, You're going to sing that song. You're gonna sing that one. Mm, okay. So I have always been a fan of bigger vocalists um, such as Celine, um, Etta James, Tina Turner. Yeah, Tina Turner. um, Just a lot of soul, like a lot of people that have heart and soul in their music. Mm. And so um, when I look for artists today, I look for that same kind of sound, um, which is probably why I love Adele so much Mm -hmm. is because I feel that power. I feel that soul. I oh, she's got it. Energy, for sure. and then same with Florence and the Machine. I can't get enough of Florence and the Machine. Mm. Did you like White House? I did like White House. There's a couple of on that Back to Black album. There's a couple of songs that just really like it's. Just, yeah. There's it, there's an indescribable something to it, you know. Yeah, and that's what I look for in music. Like for me, music is an escape, and. For me, it not only has to have good musicality and lyrics with it, but I have to feel what that person's feeling. Yeah. And I usually go towards these big voices because of the fact is you can feel everything that they're feeling. Right, yeah. The, the, there's, uh, there's not just power in the expression. Um, there's, I feel like there's often a lot of depth to different Mm -hmm. artists who they might come off as just having these kind of booming pipes um, and great range, but there's, there's um, emotion beneath it. You know, Um, I, I'm a big fan of the uh, 
glorious pain. <laughs> you know, I'm a big fan of that sort of ag- uh, aggrandized pain um, uh, and triumph. Big fan of that kind of style. Well, if you want a song that's like that, um, Etta James, All I Could Do Is Cry. Oh, yeah. Is probably the best one for that. I'm taking notes right now. All I Could Do Is Cry. Marvelous. I'm onto it. Um, yeah, I, that's what I thought, though. Seeing your clip, I'm like, that's, and that's what I meant. I'm like, that's not a person who hasn't <laughs> sung before in front of people. That's someone that's sung before in front of people. Well, um, so back in my drinking ages, like when I was drinking and stuff like that, uh, my best friend Mizzy and I, we would go to karaoke at a local um legion which is basically for the retired vets and they have karaoke and i just remember fumbling through the book one day and i put in a song request and the person that was working at looked at me like are you sure you want to do this song i was like this is just for fun right like are they gonna be really good or it's gonna be really bad that's fine the song he was questioning me about was i will always love you by whitney houston (laughs) yeah all right (laughs) so I just remember going up for the first time. I was just like, eh, people are going to vibe with it or they're not. And then after I got done with the song, it was silent. I was just like, oh, fuck. Good sounds or bad sounds? It turned out to be good silence. Nice, nice. And then I had every single time that I would come back to the Legion, people to ask if I would sing Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You. And I'm like, sure, I'm happy to. That's awesome. That's so cool. That man, yeah, that Whitney Houston song is wild. That's uh It is very wild. Um what's even more wild is I think that not a lot of people know that Dolly Parton originally wrote and sang that song. No shit. It's a Dolly song. It's a Dolly Parton song. It is a Dolly Parton song. Huh. I just blew your mind, didn't I? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Google it right now. I am not joking. No, I believe you. I mean, I'm writing it down just so I can check it out later. But damn. Yep. Okay. Dolly Parton wrote it. Well, I gather that Whitney Houston made it though. Like. Didn't make it, but you know, if Dolly never wrote it. Damn, damn, that's some deep fucking musical <laughs> lore right there. My question for you then. Is there any advice you wish you had had at the beginning of your streaming journey? Relax and have fun with it. I think when I first started streaming that I wanted everything to be perfect, right? Mm. You know, I was like, no, no sound issues, no picture issues. This is going to be fine. It's going to be great. I flubbed my words. Um, I did have some audio issues, but at the end of the day, it didn't matter because I had friends there and Mm. they were willing to help me. I had one, Kyle was just like, if you need to, I can call you and I can walk you through the audio issues because I think you might have not done X, Y, Z. And I was like, and it happened that I didn't do X, Y, Z and he figured it out. She's like, I don't even want to do this. He's like, got this just breathe relax and just go and you know that's a big thing i feel a lot of people that want to stream um put so much pressure on themselves and it's natural but it's like relax and just have fun and vibe with it absolutely are you a particularly technical minded person when it comes to um, I mean, obviously you are with your work, but when it comes to some of the technical aspects of uh, streaming, like audio and um, maybe PC stuff, is that sort of up your alley or is that something that's a little bit foreign to you? Uh, the PC stuff is a little foreign to me. Um, I remember when I told everyone, I was like, I'm finally going to get a PC. I'm no longer to stream for my PlayStation. And a lot of people are like, yay, what are you building? And I'm like, um, well, it's already built i'm just gonna go pick it up and there are some people that are very pc snobs like you got to do it yourself but i was just like you know what for my first 
gaming PC, I think pre-built is just fine. Oh, totally, totally. I mean, does it perform the functions that you want it to perform? Totally. And I even was able to slap on more RAM, which was easy. I was like, oh, this is how I do it? Okay, click. Dope. Well, let's let's see because I'll share a little secret with you. I'm not particularly um, gifted with PC specifics either. Um, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. What kind what kind of stuff you got in your PC? What are you carrying over there? Exactly what I'm carrying. I do know I have an AMD um, graphics card, and the only mm. thing that I do know for sure is that I originally had 16 gigs of RAM, and mm. then I slapped on um two eights so now i'm at 32 you're 32 damn i'm sitting at 24 what was i thinking wow i well i had a chance to the, let me show you how i know my specifics <laughs> oh no it's disappeared i'll never know again so for the longest time i had a uh, blue tack to my wall there Whenever anyone would ask me, I just had the receipt of all the stuff I ordered for this PC. I just kept it on the wall. So I'd just be like, yeah, I'll just tell you after I get a drink. I'm getting kind of thirsty. I'd get up and quickly study it as I went to get my drink. And they'd be like, oh, you know, it's uh, RX 570 with the, uh, you know, this and that. Um, yeah, it was a new thing for me too. The the sort of, I hadn't had a PC since, since like Windows 98 or something like that. Like Dino. Yeah. <laughs> totally um b- because I-, I just had laptops for the longest time you know i had been living and teaching abroad and it just doesn't seem that conducive to having giant articles of technology you know that totally makes sense and what I use for my job is I use a laptop because when I travel and I go back home or if I you know decide to visit another state all I have to do is just take my work with me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before you talked about streamers wanting everything to go perfectly, mm-hmm. and you and I both know that doesn't always happen. No, <laughs> especially if Windows updates has anything to say about it. <laughs> well, what's the what's the what are some of the things that have gone wrong? Uh, technically or otherwise on your stream? What are some of the unforeseen roadblocks you've had live on stream? Okay, well, this one actually just happened recently and I am so, so thankful for Ryman3. Um, Shout out to Ryman3. What a guy, by the way. Yeah, I love that guy. He's a sweet bean. He is. Um, he came to my rescue on my 12-hour charity stream. I had made sure that I had all my alerts ready to go but one of them wasn't populating. And I was just mm. like, I don't fucking have time to deal with this. Like I have people here that want to chat and, you know, are so excited about this. And he was just like, hey, he messaged me on Discord and he was like, I can do it if you trust me. And I was just like, you know what? I don't have any other options. I totally trust you. Worst case scenario is I just change a fucking password, whatever. Mm. Gave him my login information and he made it happen awesome and he made it happen before i got this huge raid that came in like maybe 15 minutes later and my alerts were just like popping off for like an hour and he's like do you want me to go back in and shut them off i was like no it's fine i was like because right now my brain's melted i don't even know (laughs) what to say right now (laughs) that's right you had a I'm pretty sure you raided me after raid you, you got that. the huge raid and that was that was a huge raid too. You, I think you got like, what, what kind of raid are we talking about here that you got? Raided by a partner. <laughs> I was playing Breath of the Wild and I just remember I was setting up like a poll for something. I think it was to put like the goal banner for the charity on mm. the screen and some people are like yes some people are no i was like you know what we're gonna set up a poll i'm trying to type this poll thing in and i just start seeing in the corner of my eye the chat is going so fast i'm like wait what the fuck is going on i clicked out of it and i see my alert go off and it's like db geek has raided with 800 people i'm like what the fuck 
I <laughs> lost 800. My God. I was just like, I was sitting there and I was just like, wait, what the fuck is going on? Why is my screen moving so fast? I'm going to sleep because this is a dream. And I am just seeing like little snippets of like chat and like everyone saying smash that follow button. I had my alerts going on for about close to two hours with the amount of follows that day. Wow. And it was nuts. Like after the stream, because I ended stream at like 13 hours, I sat and I cried and it wasn't crying of sadness. It was just like disbelief that people wanted to be there. People wanted to help um, a cause and just the love everyone showed. I like cried for an hour. I was just beside myself. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. I mean, especially given this, that it was the charity stream as well that meant so much. Um, that's such a cool story. Like, that's so cool to get rated by fucking 800 in that circumstance. Wow. Gosh, I was just like, I I looked at the number and at first I was like, that says 80, right? That says 80. Raymond's like, no, that's 800. I'm like, oh my fucking God. Oh my God. God. <laughs> and I only had two mods right then and there. And I was just like, I had to act fast. So I was like, my mods need help. Like, this is, this is not enough for two people. Like, this is too much. And they're like, we've got it. And I was just like, nope, I'm bringing it back up. So I knew two of my friends were in there. And I was like, you know what? I trust your guys' judgment. I moderated um, the Mad Matter and Riff and Raff at that second. Mm. And I was like, I apologize, guys. I don't have time to ask you, but they need your help. I need you to step up. And they stepped up. I have a question for you. You mentioned that chat was brrr, like rolling. Yeah. How was, because I've often wondered about that experience, you know, chat gets hot sometimes, but usually I can play catch up. Um, I can pause and go to just chatting and play that little catch up game if I feel like I'm missing stuff. But I've seen streams that are in the hundreds and plus. Um, that's a different situation. How did you find the transition um, to trying to interact with that huge mob? That was hard because... I was just starting a game, a new game. I was playing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Mm. I was only 30 minutes in when mm. my chat just blew up. And I didn't even have to ask my mods. My mods already knew. They were like, well, we are entering slow mode of 30 seconds. And that kind of helped to where I felt like I wasn't missing as much. Unfortunately, I was missing a lot because I'm not used to that volume, yep. right? And I felt really bad and I kept apologizing to people and people were just so understanding. They're like, no, we're here for the charity and we're here to support you. And, you know, if you miss something, it's fine. And I'm not hesitant to ask somebody like, I'm sorry, like I, I saw it, but then it kind of got away from me. Can you re repost it? Yeah. You know, and it was just wild. Like, I think my eyes were strained the most that day, but in the best way. I bet. I bet. Yeah, that it just seems like a great, overwhelming, but in all the best ways kind of situation. Oh, it definitely was. It was just like, I've got this massive raid. I have people here that are just having the best time. And then we reached $2,000. I was like, you know what? This has been That's the best day. And then so the next cool. day I slept like 12 hours. I was so tired. <laughs> a well-earned rest, a very well-earned yeah. rest. Wow, yeah. I. You know, sometimes you see the like some of the big, big, big names on Twitch. They have, um, you know, like the idea of having 100 in chat seems pretty big for me. Like that's like, ooh, 100. And then you then two and then 800 is wild. There's people yeah. who have 20,000. And it's such a, I feel like the paradigm shifts once you get to a certain stage because there's no way they can interact with people. It becomes then a kind of uh, they do their thing. Maybe sometimes things will get highlighted in messages or something like that. But then yeah. chat kind of becomes this self-sufficient thing. Do you think, do you think that um, if you were to go, um, if you were to get to that stage where let's say 800 was the norm or 8,000 or whatever it is, do you think you would miss anything about um, the way it is for add sort of this pre-partner stage 
if I was ever lucky enough to get to the partner stage, I think I would also miss like, you know, just the humble beginnings of it. But mm -hmm. I also feel like if I was to get partner, I would still want to be humble about it and try to interact with everyone. Yeah. Because, and I hear this a lot, a lot of people say, I don't want to tune into somebody that's a bigger streamer because yeah. I'm ignored, right? And I don't ever want anyone to feel ignored. So even in my chat now, which can get really popping because mm -hmm. it's Dark Souls, right? I let people know, like, I'm sorry if I missed something, please repost it. Mm. You're not ignored, you're loved, and you're welcomed here. And no matter how this channel goes, you always have a place here. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. I've learned, there was a couple of times before I'd, um, you know, maybe nine, 10 months ago, or that kind of period, uh, where I felt that I was ignored in people's chats when there was like 30 plus people in there or something like that. It's taken me now to realize, no, they didn't ignore me intentionally. They just like, there's just a lot going on. Like, yeah. I think it's very rare that a streamer intentionally ignores someone um, or at least the people that I know. Uh, but there's just, uh, it's this weird skill set, right? Like you're, you mentioned you're playing a game you've never played before while dealing with the emotions of um, having this great support for, for a cause that you're obviously very invested in for good reason. And then being able to, like, there's a lot of like, uh, there's a lot to focus on there. It's a lot to focus on. And it was a lot just to even process. But at the end of the day, um, what came out on top for me was just reminding myself how good people really can be. Yeah. You know, we yeah. see a lot of the times how cruel people can be, but I feel like coming on Twitch has shown me that, you know what? World ain't so bad. The major the vast majority of people uh show a lot of kindness and a lot of uh generosity and a lot of well, just good vibes and just and and humanity i think is the important part a lot of humanity yeah. sorry to use a dark it's souls true. term <laughs> it's so true unfortunately there is about the five percent that are just weirdos and creeps mm. but i've kind of just learned to laugh about it because i'm just like you know what you want to say lewd comments about me that's fine and <laughs> how um how frequent is that for you um or infrequent or how often do you deal with that every so often yeah um i think for some people it's not the norm to see girls streaming video games seems weird that pe that's not the norm for people i don't know it's i don't know uh, um it must and be then that. some people just act in those reactions that they have and it's just like that's not okay because i'm pretty sure you wouldn't say that to your mother so don't say it to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or they wouldn't say it to you in person. Mm -hmm, exactly. That, that's but the, they're that's totally the thing. behind the screen. Yeah. Um, I've actually had a guy come in and say that he would sub at tier three if I popped a tit out. And I was like, uh, fuck you, no. <laughs> Here's my theory. They're all 14. They're not 13, they're not 50, they're all 14 years of age. I Look, I'm not prejudiced against any group of people, uh, race, religion, um, uh, gender, identity, entity identity thing, with one exception, 14-year-olds. Now, yes, I know I was 14 once, but I was a piece of shit then. And my theory is all those people are 14 years old. That's my theory. What's your take on this? My theory is they're just bored and alone. <laughs> Yeah, it could be that too. Could be that too. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had, um, I get different ones though. I've had some pretty lewd ones, like people like, "Will you do this act to me? Like, please do perform weird sexual acts. Please do this to me." And I'm always bemused. Like, I don't get it very often, but over a year, there's been a few. Um, I'm like, but. What like what do you what what do you think I'm gonna say yes and then find you somewhere on earth? Like what are you what the fuck are you talking about? It's just it's so weird. 
it is very weird and i think it's it's just something like you learn to laugh about yeah. like it's uncomfortable but you learn to laugh about it and i try to tell all my friends and just like yeah it sucks you know women get objectified but totally. we also need to make it the normal that men do too yeah and and that it, and that it's not like in my opinion anyway it's not this like war of every dude's out there trying to objectify women there's just some bad apples out there you know like yeah and it's totally true like i have seen my male friends get objectified and then they're like that's kind of comfortable so i mm. kind of they're like we definitely understand what you girls go through and i'm like yeah mm. it's never a fun topic it's never a fun time but unfortunately it happens but I think it's something that, um, and I think you might have said this, this is something that everyone's going to go through if they're streaming. Mm -hmm. And I think your response to just kind of laughing it off, being like, oh, whatever, Ben, is, is the best one, right? Because it really doesn't, I think it's important not to let it hurt you, you know, uh, or, mm -hmm. or make you feel any way. Like I had one, sometimes I get kind of hurtful ones as well. Like, um, someone came in the other day and was like that haircut is absolute ass and look i mean that's fine that's 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 like totally fine if you think that way like i look i don't expect you know no one's you can't please everyone and yeah. uh you, you're entitled to your opinion that's fine but it's like what would get to me what would get to me about something like that is but why are you like all you're trying to, you're not you're not suggesting that i change it it's not constructive. You're just saying you are shit and here's why. And like, in a way, that's just, I feel sorry for people that that's their idea of a good time. Like, that's how you're going to, that's what you're going to do. Yeah. I feel bad for them in a way, you know, like we can yeah. just ban them. It's, it's totally true. Um, there's been streams where I'm modding and I've modded for the twins and I have been harassed by some random person that was like, I find you attractive and I'm like that's cool but that's not how you talk to someone let alone treat them yeah so good day <laughs> ban um and it's just it just is mind-boggling to me it takes so much energy to be a negative and hateful person yeah yeah than it is to just be positive and happy totally totally now I'm not gonna lie I do bring some negative energy sometimes but it's always directed at the game <laughs> It's I mean, a, that's totally always fine. directed at the game. There have been so many times where I'm just like, fuck this game. Oh, yeah. Fuck this boss. I'm done. <laughs> I threw a controller the other day. I actually like Oof. threw a controller. And here's the best part. It wasn't even the controller I was using. I just saw another <laughs> controller. Went, yeah, fuck this. <laughs> uh, so the controller did nothing to me, but I had to um, punish it. Um, I don't think I've thrown a controller as of recently i think like when i get really frustrated i'm just like you know what i'm taking a five minute fucking break because i need it <laughs> that's very healthy that's very healthy um i will look i it was my worst throw of a year i think i like oh, i no. <laughs> i sometimes do no well here's the thing like i rarely throw but but i have a bed back here and i sometimes do the disdainful like just toss like a little because i know it's going to land on there um, I'm not going to do it now because I'll probably miss. It was your sofa behind there, but now I know it's your bed. That's the bed. <laughs> uh, and well, Agus Kuhn JP, for, apparently for the longest time, he thought that was my floor. And so he didn't understand <laughs> how I was somehow able to be so short in comparison to my floor. Um, I've tried to conceal it as best as possible. I know that's the first real like I was I'd like and the weirdest thing is it was uh, someone came in and I was already I'd already like taken a break and I went into just chatting and it had already mm -hmm. been about five minutes since the moment it was such a weird like I was like what, who was that that did that he asked <laughs> how's the game been going I'm mean, like you know it's been going really bad and then in that moment I decided to like just toss it against the wall thankfully thankfully it didn't break um but uh yeah I try not to rage sometimes it happens it uh, happens. It'll happen when you get through more Soulsborne games, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I will just, this is the, I'm going to go through the, the stoicism Porto phase. It's going to be all. Porto's going to start taking yoga. You hear it here first. <laughs> Seriously. Um, fortune cookie. This has been marvelous. I've really been looking forward to talking with you. Uh, thank you so much for giving your time. I know you're very busy. 
Um, it's been awesome. Before we go, what's coming up for you in the future? What are you hyped for uh, in 2021? What's happening uh, on and off stream for you? Um, plans for 2021. Um, well, hoping to be fully vaccinated here in a couple weeks as I get my second dose Let's next go. Tuesday. So that'll be exciting. Um, I don't know. There's a lot to be determined with 2021. I'm just kind of taking it day by day mm. um, as far as my personal life goes. Um, as far as Twitch goes, um, my plan is just to build more friendships and community and just see how far I can run with this. You know, like I never thought in my life that I would be streaming video games and that I would make so many wonderful friends such as yourself. So it, it just really warms my heart to know that, you know, in this pandemic, we're not alone. We have each other. That's a lovely way to end it. Thank you so much again, Fortune Cookie. You're the best. Can't wait Thank for that. Thank you so much for having me, Porto. You're the best. No, I appreciate no, you. you. It's been an honor. Um, and I'm looking forward to that singing stream, that song. I'm looking forward <laughs> to finding out what I'm going to go oh, research Disney later Lord. on. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. And I will see you all next time. Good night.